listen, I think the kid can shoot, right? Like, I think the kid can play. The reason why the board is the most absurd thing by drafting by the board in the NBA, as opposed to the NFL, where you have 22 positions that you need to fill, and right. not including special teams, is you've got to fit. You need fit on your team, especially a team like the Sixers who are trying to win now. Like you're trying to build a team now to win. So if you if you just go, I listen, I think the kid can play. I think the kid, you mm-hmm. know, he maybe is a winner. I don't know, right? I don't think he's a point guard. I think he's more of a two guard than a point guard. Uh, I think the kid can shoot the lights out. And if he can get off the shot, then God bless, he can really maybe fill it up. But the problem is, again, you have Maxi, and you yes. can't convince me that you can play the two. Even Maury said, "Well, they're not going to play together at the same time." So now let's <laughs> fast forward to the to the playoffs. Okay, right. well, Maxi's going to play forty four minutes plus in the playoffs. So where does that leave your number one pick? Yeah, your and when you talk and when you talk about fit, that's where we go to the that's where we go to the Dalton Connect. Part of it where he just continued to fall. And he's six five. Yes, he's twenty three. But so what? The guy can play basketball and he can shoot. And that's one. If we're focused on the shooting with Jared McCain, let's also focus on the shooting that Dalton Connect has. And while he may be a little bit slower, he can put the ball on the floor and he can finish at the rim as well. He has that mid range game defensively. Also a question, even with that bigger size at six five. However. You, you're talking about fit. That fit was much better in this particular situation. The shooting, yeah, shooting can come from anywhere with McCain and connect with Joel Embiid on the floor. But the other part, as you mentioned, is you're about to give your other guy who's six two a max contract of two hundred million dollars, who's going to play forty minutes a night. Exactly, exactly. And I look at Connect and I go, you know what? He's a tremendous athlete. He's he's a kid that I mean, you see him sky like he can he can he can move. He can get up. You yeah. Know what? And then yeah. you look at you look at eight, at Tennessee. I don't care. If he's twenty three like you. I look at him. I go at Tennessee. He was their best player. He got blitzed every night. He got blitzed every night, and he's still dropping thirty a game. Like, are, are you kidding me? Like, give me the kid that got blitzed at big time at big time college basketball and still found a way to score. That translates to the league, especially for a team that needs to win now. Like, mm-hmm. th- listen, we got no patience. You're a Sixer fan. You, you're done. You're at your limit. This is it. The glass is full. There's no more patience. You got to build a team that can win now. Compete now. And God bless the kid, right, McCain, but he's not a fit. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough fit. And it's going to be a tough sell. It's really going to be difficult. And sure, look, and he's going to go to summer league, and he's going to go out there, and he's probably going to drop around sixteen to twenty on average for this basketball team, right? He's going to show some really good things, but how's that going to translate to the NBA and fitting next to Tyrese Maxey? Because Maxey's not going to be out there on the floor. Sure, he might be out there with Turk Smith and give you a little bit to look at. However, when he gets to coming here, training camp, preseason, he may do some things. How's he going to get on the floor and get on the floor and, and be an impactful player on the floor when, because there are going to be times where you want to see, all right, you drafted the kid. He's on this team. Let me see, you put him out there with your best players and see how it works out. And then you might get your answer and it may not be the answer that you like. Well, let me ask you this. Is, is there a way that is, is, they, is there a trade in the works? Because the other aspect is you, you, you only have uh, a finite amount of assets to build your team to win now. Yeah. Maury's not dumb, right? He knows he's got limited assets. And to waste one of those assets on a kid that doesn't fit or using him as a part-time role doesn't make sense. I, I'm shocked they, they didn't trade the pick. Forget about connect. I forgot. I'm shocked they didn't trade the pick when, when they had a chance. Like, I, I guess they didn't get any offers. But could there still be a trade that's about to pop? I'm giving them till Monday to see what this thing kind of look like. Well, yeah, Sunday it starts. Free agency, 6 p.m. <laughs> so we'll see uh, about that one. But, yeah, there's a possibility. As you know, there's a possibility of that. And we have leaned more towards the Brandon Ingram name because of everybody else that has now fallen off the board that 
if you go get Brandon Ingram, could he, Jared McCain, be a part of that deal where he is uh, sent to New Orleans in a package like that? Could he be on the move? Could that happen? Could he go elsewhere in some other potential deal? Chicago, Zach Levine, just throwing a name out there, not saying that that that's the one. But yeah, there's a, there's a possibility that that's the case because, as you said, it's not a great fit here. Dal Moore is a smart guy. Yes, the guy is a winner. He can shoot. He's tough. He can do all those things. So all the stuff that Jay Bill has said about him. Uh, but it, the fit is tough to just sit there and, and, and grasp onto that and say, OK, I don't have any other questions because the guy can shoot the basketball. The fit is tough. You wonder if there is a second move uh, come forthcoming. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's get into this for a second, because, again, we understand the gravity of this offseason. And it just got the chasm between the favorites, I'll use that as plural, because of Cousin, and uh, the Sixers has widened dramatically. Because now it's not just Boston, but it's now the Knicks who land your cousin, Mikel Bridges, uh, who uh, wind up re-signing yesterday OG Ananobi. They look nasty. They look really nasty. Yeah, so... That's why I bring up the Brandon Ingram name. It may not be the one, the first one that rolls off for a lot of people, but as you pointed out, the questions now with Paul George, the uncertainty with Jimmy Butler in Miami, where it looks like he's probably going to stay in Miami, where's the next best thing that you go to? Because things are starting to slim out with OG Ananobi now re-signing Pascal Siakam, Siakam also staying in Indiana, and now with Kale going to New York, where do you go? Uh, Lowry Markin is probably going to cost you just as much. If you weren't give, willing to give up as much for Mikhail in this deal, are you going to give that much up for Lowry Markin in, in a Utah Jazz deal? Probably not. I would. When you would, they probably you you probably would have done that for Mikhail too, but they didn't, and that's why I'm saying that you probably won't get Lowry Markin. In. So now you go to these other names: Brandon Ingram, Zach Levine maybe a few others that may come available. Do you look at DeMar DeRozan on a maybe two-year deal at a balloon kind of payment to look at that where you're not giving up any assets in that? And then you're probably keeping Jared McCain unless he's in a separate deal. But do you go that route now because of that? And then when you talk about that and you look at Boston, you need to be able to also defend those guys. So who are those people? Who are those people on your team? You have the big fella behind you. He'll clean up a lot of your mess. But on the perimeter, you need some size there that, that's going to do that. So names that we've thrown out there on our show, Najee Marshall from New Orleans, who is an unrestricted free agent, a guy that, hey, is this his time to pop? Atlantic City native, is it his turn to become one of those players that you see that just takes that next step in his career, like we've seen from Herb Jones, certainly with his team, Derek Jones Jr. being a big role player there for the the Dallas Mavericks and that, in that same type of position where when you get to the postseason you need to be able to defend these players Donovan Mitchell Jimmy Butler and certainly Boston and now New York with the players that they have you have to be able to shut these guys down or slow them down as best as possible so you're also going to need those types of players to complete and fill out this roster yeah I I uh I mean they have a lot of like just to fill out the roster do you have a lot of work to do and now they have five players on their roster, including McCain, who's unsigned, of course. But Paul Reed, Ricky Council the fourth, and B Maxi, and, and now Jared McCain. You have to fill out a roster. Is it wise to invest the four million dollars in, into the pick? Uh, well, there were the the other option too. Ant last night was maybe trade down and maybe acquire some more assets and, and do that. But is it wise to do that? I, I would say it's okay, just because they have so much cap space. And uh, they can have as much as $64 million as Derek always talks about on our show. And he said it on your show as well, that they have so much cap space that that's probably not a, not a, not a bad thing there. And when you look at maybe as we include DeMar DeRozan in this conversation, you give him an overpay maybe, then yeah, 4 million is not that bad when you're looking at possibly giving DeMar DeRozan, let's say a two year deal at uh, somewhere around $60 million for, for that very reason. So I would say it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to have that four million in the first round pick on your roster for that case. I I, I know this is uh, very unlikely, but there's a lot of uh, rumors swirling around KD, and yeah. you know the fact that he may become available. For, for whatever reason, I'm not buying that one. And I understand it's reported by the great 
people like Adrian Wojnarowski, a friend of yours, and and uh, the, one of the best, if you want to argue that there, and 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 doing what he does. But something, and look, the, now everything trailing Kevin Durant, you can say, why would you not believe that? Because of asking out of uh, Golden State and then Brooklyn and now in Phoenix, would it be anybody surprised that he does it again? But the relationship he has with Ime Odoka from their time together in Brooklyn for that short time before Udoka took over in Boston, so that's real. And, and, and the fact that he does move on, that's real. But I, I just and I just don't see it. And Matt Ishbia doing everything that he did to put that team together. He's not getting rid of Kevin Durant right now, in my opinion. And, and that's why I'm not I'm not buying that when I'm leaning more towards 75 percent. He's staying in Phoenix. I'm not even looking at at, at that as an option. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could I, be uh, wrong, but I'm just not. Listen, I, I, I kind of feel it. I feel it's highly unlikely. Too. That's why I preface it. But that is kind of making the rounds. Um, that, so we had to so, bring it up. Uh, yeah. the, the other aspect is the, uh, you mentioned DeRozan, uh, somebody else told me go, you know, Clay Thompson, like to get, which, uh, you know, Maxie Can't and Clay, move. I mean, I don't <laughs> see, see that, uh, yeah. it, it's, it, it's a lot of slim pickings is kind of where, where we're at, like in, and how you do it. And then it comes back to the other thing, like how long can you wait for and be like, how many times can you punt? down the road when it just doesn't make sense to do that with Joel and his age. I don't know how much more he, uh, of that he will take. And I know. You, you talk about the age and all, but how much more until he's just saying, all right, uh, we're not, we're clearly not doing anything. You, you may have tried, but you did not succeed. So now right. I have to look elsewhere. So that is the question. And you look at them and you say their window really, and even with Maxi and the, 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 the pathway that he has for so many years, you're really looking at two to three years with Joel Embiid and trying to win right now. So if you're trying to do that, you really have to, you really have to make sure that you absolutely get this done this summer. When you put everything together the way that you did last offseason, didn't do much at the deadline, getting Buddy healed, yes, but it was all about cap flexibility this summer. Summer is here. DeRozan, all right, that's great, but Ananobi, Bridges, uh, Na- uh, Siakam, off the board, Denny Avdia, who was a name that we talked about that was really interesting on a really good contract in Washington, unsure if they would even look to move him. He goes for pick 14 and Malcolm Brogdon and, you know, and, and Dude, I, like, like, I got to tell you, like, that's the kind of player they need. Yes. So why were you not now? You don't have the player on your roster to match uh, like Malcolm Brogdon in terms of the salary. Maybe it was Paul Reed. I don't know. But you got to get involved in that. That that's a nice one, and that may not have been the splash, but that's just a piece to start no, things and, and off. That's, but listen, that's how you build a team. Like they, we talk about with the Knicks, like the and what, how they built it, Boston, and they built it. He's one of those players that is a good role player. Like that's the kind of player you want. Yeah. So Stretch. things are starting to fall mm. off the board, and when you do that, when you have that, you have to go do something. Now you just wonder when you do something. You're in kind of panic mode, and you're just going out there to do something just to do it. Are you going to put yourself in a bad spot? Now you do have Maxi and Embiid, so anytime you have those two, you're gonna win games. Now the question is, are you going to be able to build the right people? Is the Rose in the right fit? I like him more than 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 Kyle and Derek do uh, on the show. Uh, I like him a little bit more, and of course, that's a lot of the three point volume, the fact that he lives in the same area that Joel Embiid does in that mid post. Uh, mid-range area so how would that work together but my thing is always hey guys have never played with a player like Joel Embiid at that size so he'll create a lot of opportunities for you so I'm more intrigued by that certainly the Brandon Ingram piece not as much the Zach Levine side of things you mentioned Clay Thompson he can't move so I I, I, I don't know how I would get on board with that one even with the shooting Uh, again Embiid is different than even Steph just because of the fact that you're talking about a low post player that's going to command a lot of attention. Ball swings to you, you're going to get some good looks. But, man, they're, they're running out of names unless there's something in it that we just don't know about yet. I keep I keep hoping that that's it. Go ahead, Greg. I mean, Devon, you know way more than probably all of us combined. Do you have any hope, knowing the current landscape, that there are moves possible that can keep them competitive and get them past the second round of the playoffs? 
Well, again, VG, they're always going to be competitive because of Embiid and Maxi. even when you've had other guys and 50 is the standard with this team in terms of the regular season. To your point, that second round is always their plateau. They cap at that, at that, at that second round. That's where the other stuff comes into play. But then we go back and then you start making me think and go back to when me and Ant will be yelling at each other about game six and 20 to 23 playoffs because we speak about Tobias Harris and 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 DeAnthony Melton, George Niang, all these players on the roster, and you have James Harden not, not playing all that great, but he won you two games in that Boston series, getting past that second round when they should have done that. So I, I say that and bring it all the way back to that because it, depending on what this roster looks like, those two are the ones that are going to spearhead the whole thing. And you have a good coach in Nurse, and if you believe in him to do what we think he is as good at, then they should still be able to be in that contention, even with the improvement with New York, maybe even somebody like Cleveland where they have a new coach, and Kenny Atkinson that get the best out of them, where you look at the Sixer team and say whatever they build out, because let's go back to even this season. When De'Anthony Melton was healthy, they had a top five offensive rating in the NBA. Top five. And that's De'Anthony Melton out there on the floor with Nick Batum. So your offensive right. players are Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, and Joel Embiid. So if you put those right pieces around and, and, and Daryl Morey is able to go out there and find the right fits and bring back some of the, the Sixers that were on last season's roster, I would say yes. But again, we just haven't seen it yet, and some of the players that we liked are now in other uniforms, and you thought that they would have a chance to do that. So I would say yes, but it's hard because, as Anthony said, your patience is now up to here, right? and, and, that's, and that's tough to what, convince others that that is, in, in fact, the case. What's your confidence level with Maury right now? <laughs> that's tough, <laughs> one, man, um, because why, why – why were you I'll unable it, to go get it's, it's, Caruso? There's no, I have no confidence in him right now. Yeah, because why were you unable I mean, to go what, get what, what has he done? Yeah. I, listen, I, I love the guy, right? I go, all right, let's yeah. see what he can do. Let's yeah. see what he can do. I gave him the benefit of the doubt with Harden, and he yeah. got saddled yeah. with Ben Simmons, right? The whole thing. He made the right move with Harden by not giving him a long-term deal. But I, he, this past trade deadline, he didn't do anything. He wasn't proactive that way. He waited till the end of the, uh, the what's happened now. And uh, he got he has till Monday in my eyes or Sunday night. We all city like the mayor. 